Hi everyone, welcome to the Adelaide Cottage podcast. My name is Shauna and I am your host recording from Buffalo, New York, um, where I live with my husband, our two small boys, and our two cats. Um, it's been a while, I apologize. The boys are home from school this, you know, of course for the summer and they just took a bike ride with my husband so I thought it would be a perfect time to sit down and record an episode and catch you guys up and say hello. Um, you can find show notes for my episodes in our Ravelry group, which is called the Adelaide uh, Cottage Podcast. Um, I'll link it down below. Uh, you could find me on Instagram as Adelaide Cottage, as well as, um, that's it, Ravelry and Instagram. <laughs> um, so definitely check those out and be sure to click subscribe. Uh, below on YouTube here and even click a thumbs up if you like the video so that you uh, can be notified whenever I have a new episode come out. Um, so today I have a finished knitting object to show you. Um, I have some quilting to show you. I have a work in progress and I have a little bit of crochet to show you. I'm also going to be uh, drawing and announcing uh, the winner for the Move Along Cal that I hosted with Kristen of Villain Vine Yarns and the Yarngasm podcast. So I will start with my knitting finished object. The first thing that I finished are my speckled graffiti socks. And these were knit out of um, Knit Picks um, Graffiti Speckle Colorway. And then the heels and toes were Knit Picks um, Stroll Fingering. And this is the Heather Dove colorway. For these, um, it was just a plain vanilla sock. I did 25 uh, rows of two by two rib for the cuff. And then I did 50 rolls, rolls, <laughs> 50 rows for the leg. And then I did a Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And then I measured from the back of the heel down to here, and I think I measured about eight inches, and then I started the decreases for the toe. Um, I pointed out last time, I made a small mistake right here where I, when I was starting the um, heel, or when I was ending the heel um, turn, I continued with the gray yarn instead of switching back to the the speckled graffiti yarn, but it doesn't bother me at all. It's literally one row, and I think at the crease of the foot, it won't really show too much. And then I remembered for the next one not to do that. Sorry, this is blowing out a little bit, but I'll just put it a little bit closer so that you can see the speckles. It's a very pretty, pretty colorway, I think. So yeah, those are finished. And I, I knit these in tandem with each other using Magic Loop, my Chai Gu, Chow Gu um, needles on a US size zero. Um, and I really like that method because um, when you finish, you literally have two, two socks done. Um, so for those of you who don't know what that is, really quickly, um, I break the skein up into two cakes of yarn. Um, so I, I split it pretty much in half. And then I do the cuff of one, and then I stop and do the cuff of the other. Um, and then I'll do the leg of one, go back and do the leg of the other. And then I'll do the heel, and then this heel, and then so on. The foot, and then the other foot, and then the toe, and then the other toe. So. It, it is really, really, um, I really like it that way. Um, so the socks that I'm working on now are, I also have a shawl on the needles that I want to show you because I did make some progress since the last time I worked on it and I forgot to bring it over here. So I might pause this and go grab it because I think you might like to see that. These are a new pair of socks that I started um, for Sarah of the Love Sock Wools podcast. Um, she's having a Bronte along Cal where 
you knit anything Bronte related, Jane Eyre, or any of those um, stories. So I bought one of these, or I think we did a swap, a swap for this actually. She swapped me one of her Jane Eyre inspired project bags, which I absolutely love. This old vintage fabric. And of course it's got a, a handle and a beautiful, I love her bottle cap logos. And then the inside has this vintage floral pattern. So I really love it. And then I swapped her for a, a skein of yarn. Um, so again, vanilla sock. I told myself when I started knitting socks, um, I messed so many of them up and got really discouraged that I was just going to do vanilla socks until I feel really comfortable before I move on to patterns. So I hope you guys aren't bored with my lack of pattern socks, but I took a leap and um, conquered my fear of contrasting heels and toes, you guys. So that's a step. We got to take baby steps here, right? So I cast on from the Jane Eyre story. Um, my, the Adelaide Cottage yarn I also have an Adelaide Cottage um, Etsy shop if you're interested in hand-dyed yarn and occasional project bags. I'll talk more about that later, but um, I have a colorway called Bertha Mason. When Sarah knew that she was going to host this cal, she asked if I can come up with a colorway or two or three um, inspired by the stories, and I was very happy to do that because I loved watching the film. I have not read the book. I do own it, um, but I have not read it yet. But the film was really, really great. And as I was watching it, I was kind of taking notes. And I took notes on, um, you know, characters that really inspired me or settings and kind of drew the colors from that. And Bertha Mason really caught my eye. And <laughs> I wanted something kind of bold and... Um, you know, a little bit of uh, fluorescent in there. So I came up with this colorway. And so I did the cuff and the leg of this one. So this one has a, if it's getting blown out, it has a gray background and then it's speckled with um, some red, pink, like a fluorescent pink and brown. So I thought it, it kind of captured the, she's a little bit crazy. So I thought it captured that personality trait well. And then um, this is the cuff for the other one, <clears throat> the second sock. And here I did 20 rows of two by two rib and I'm doing 50 rows of the leg and then I'll do a fish lips kiss heel because I really enjoy doing those. I'm just looking out the window. I saw the neighbor's dog <clears throat> running past. Um, and then this is a progress keeper from Joanna of the Gnome Knitter. Um, if you don't already follow her on Instagram, she is um, she has a personal account. She just kind of set up another account for her um, her shop, and it's called the. N I'm going to put it in the down bar because I don't want to mess it up. But for these socks, I thought that I would do contrast heels and toes with this Knit Picks stroll fingering in the cork colorway because it'll pull out the brown and give it a little bit of depth and interest. So <clears throat> that's my plan. And I'm doing Magic Loop on my Chow Goos. These are the Chow Goo mini lace needles that I love. The cord is super flexible and this is um, USA Zero. <clears throat> I cast on um, usually 56 stitches for my socks on a size zero because I'm a loose knitter um, and here I cast on um, 60. All right. I'm going to pause this and go get that shawl to show you because I feel like you would really like to see it. So I'll be right back. Um, so I wanted to show you my Aisling shawl that has been on the needles for about a year. 
Um, when I get to the end of shawl knitting, like towards the end when the rows get really long, I get bored with it. But I was like, you know what, Shauna, you have to get through this part to get to the border so that you can finish it and enjoy it because I really love the shawl. I love the yarn that I'm using. <clears throat> the pattern is beautiful. And I was a little bit intimidated by the border. And I think I might have mentioned this in a previous episode, but um, it has cabling. And I don't think I've ever done cabling before. So it was a new technique and those new techniques scare me. Um, I don't know why. And then once I do it, you know, a time or two, I get more confident. But I took this camping with us the last time we went, and I started the border. And I'm loving it. I fell in love with it all over again, and I can't wait to finish. So, um, just because I want to wear it. <laughs> so first, I'll show you the actual shawl. I can't remember if I showed you this last time. I couldn't have because I worked on it between episodes. So... This is, um, the main color is I Am, I am No Bird um, by Woolen Vine Yarns. And then the contrast color where the stripes are is Adelaide Cottage Yarn in the Light Roast colorway. Progress Keeper is a beautiful one by Amber of Maker's Haven. And this is the border, you guys. And I have to be careful because it likes to slip off of my needles. So let me hold it up for you the right way. Look at how pretty this is. Ugh, isn't that gorgeous? I can't wait to wear it. It's so pretty. Ugh. Like I I love it. I love this little pico edge with the, the lace in between and the cabling design. It's so pretty. It takes a very long time. Each repeat takes quite a while. So let's see. We've got quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit more to go. Yeah, so that's my Aisling shawl right now. So I would say I'm about a quarter of the way done with the border. It does take a long time, but I'm enjoying it now and um, making progress. So, so my granny square blanket I started quite a while back. It takes a long time to make to make a granny um, square. I think in multiple colors. So the last time I talked to you about this, um, I only had it was maybe like a four by four square. Um, and this is all, as for yarn, it's all Cascade 220, um, sport superwash. So it's all wool, superwash wool. And, um, it got really expensive to do a lot of colors, but I, I like the, the outcome so far. Um, doing it now I would pick, I would have picked a different color palette, but I picked colors back in 2011, I think. That's how long it's been. Um, so first I crocheted all of the circles, not the white edges. I crocheted all the circles. Jason made a little chart for me. Jason's my husband. Made a little chart for me um, so that no two circles would be exactly alike. So even though they may have the same colors in them, it would be in a different order. So this part took me a really long time. I primarily crocheted them when we were camping because it was something um, kind of mindless to do while we were sitting by the campfire. And then I wouldn't pick it up for a while. Um, and then I got all of the circles done. Um, and then I just had to crochet them together with this ivory colored yarn. And then I did a few of them and it got to be, like I said, four by four. And I was like, oh, this is not growing fast enough. <laughs> I was getting impatient. Um, I'm like, you know what? I started a craft planner, and I'll show I'll show it to you later. Um, it's part of my like planning goal for the new year is to start 
um, getting my craft projects done so that I can enjoy them and move on to other things. So I've been planning um, certain crafts each week to work on, uh, what to do each day, and it's been really helping. I don't plan my knitting because I knit all the time. So whenever I feel like knitting, I'm going to knit. But as far as like quilting and stuff, crocheting, um, sewing, and things like that, I wanted to kind of um, just get a rain on it, I guess. <laughs> but this is how it looks so far. Um, we've got... It's getting pretty big. So um, I would like to do one more row lengthwise and one more row um, width just so that it's a nice throw, throw blanket size. Um, and then I have lots of ends to, to weave in on this side. But I'm really, really happy that this is coming together because, um, <laughs> see those? Um, my husband and Aiden, my oldest, <laughs> he, he remembers this blanket from when he was, um, he's nine now, and he remembers it from when he was like five or four even. Um, yeah, he was four when I started this. And they joke all the time, oh, you know, maybe when we're 60, we'll be able to cover up with that crochet blanket. <laughs> well, I'm getting it done, and they're going to be able to cover up with it. Darn it. Okay, so that's that. Um, and then I have my granny stripe, which I like to work on when I'm in bed. It's a nice, relaxing uh, project to work on. Um, and I just have this in, this is actually just an old... 31 brand bag. It's got my initials on it. And then it's nice and big inside for this to grow. So I'm working from a magic cake. So I put a bunch of minis together, magic knotted them, and then um, had my littlest boy help me wind it up into a cake so that I don't have to worry about knotting in the middle of crocheting. Um, so I have a progress keeper on here from the last time I did an episode or recorded an episode just so that we can see how much I've done, which wasn't very much. Um, oh, my hook is still in here. So there it is. My little St. Patrick's Day shamrock. Um, so probably just a few rows. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, I think. So eight rows, but it's very long. Um, I chained, how many did I chain? 310-ish. So this is going to fit all, like the whole length of our couch, which will be really nice. And I'm not in a rush to finish this at all. I just think it's really fun to work on when I don't want to think about a pattern. And I have so many pretty minis in here from friends and some are from my shop. And then I'm using um, this Addy Olive Wood crochet hook, which I really enjoy. It's a size F. So that's my crochet. Um, before I get into quilting, um, a little bit of shop news, and then I'll announce the, I'll pick the winner for the move along. Um, for shop news, we do have some skeins in, in the shop right now um, for purchase. And there is a new colorway, which I still have to name, but I really love the way it turned out. There we go, that's better. Um, it's a really pretty like golden ochre colorway with some brown and almost like a berry color. Um, I'm gonna dye up some more of these. Um, 
I have to think of a name. I don't know. We'll think about that. But these will be in the shop in the next few days. So today is Saturday the 15th. I'm hoping by Wednesday, um, the 19th of July, I will have these listed plus a few more colorways. Um, I am also going to be opening pre-orders for um, Christmas uh, or Advent calendars. I've gotten a few messages asking if I'd be doing them. It's something I haven't done before, um, but I was definitely thinking about doing it this year. Um, it was something that was on my radar. Um, so I'm going to be opening up pre-orders sometime next week. So keep an eye out on Instagram. Um, again, Adelaide Cottage there. And then if you'd like to turn on the post notifications for my, um, my profile, so that you'll be able to see when I post um, for next week so that you can jump on there and get a spot because there'll be limited um, slots for that. And I'm not sure um, if I have room for more as the months go on leading up to Christmas, I will definitely consider opening more, um, more spots because those will have to get shipped out um, in early November, I'm thinking, so that I can make sure everybody has them, if, um, especially if the customer's international. Um, so yeah, that is something to look forward to. I'm excited about that. And I'm also hoping to jump on that bandwagon and purchase from another indie dyer. Um, I'm not sure exactly who's doing them yet, but in the past I know of a few who have done them, and I would love to purchase... Um, purchase my own advent calendar from one of from one of them so that I don't really know what I'm getting it'll be a surprise so for the move along kale um, I have not yet drawn a winner I'm going to do that now in front of you because I, I always think it's exciting to see the the post number pop up but Joanna of the gnome knitter who I talk about frequently because I just think her work is amazing um, generously donated to the podcast for of her adorable progress keepers for the summertime. So she's got a bunch of um, popsicles. This one's chocolate with strawberry inside. This one looks like um, orange with vanilla inside. This looks like a raspberry. And this is kind of like an Americana 4th of July um, one. And I have one of these on my projects. I think I showed it earlier. So thank you, Joanna. That was so very sweet of you. She said to use them for um, for Cal prizes to my discretion. So I'm going to include one with the mauve along, and it's going to be the mauve one. <laughs> Fitting, isn't it? I crack myself up. Okay, so this is what the winner will receive. The winner will receive one skein of... Um, our Adelaide Cottage yarn in the Cordelia colorway, which is Anne of Green Gables inspired, and it just so happened to be mauve for the mauve along. So um, this is what it looks like. This is my favorite color ever in the universe. Um, so that's it's a tonal mauve colored yarn, yarn, yarn. And how perfect will this go with it? Oh, I love it. Okay, so um, let me draw for that winner now. And then after that, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, a personal thing going on as well as um, my little planning thing. Uh, let's see, okay. So I did write down that there were 110 entries. One of them was mine, so there's 109. Um, so I'm going to do, here's the blank slate here. Can you see that? Or is it blowing out? There, it's blank. <laughs> so we've got 1, 2, 109. And there. And we're going to generate. Doop. So what is that? 15? 15. So let's see who post 15 was. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. I am getting ready for Rhinebeck. Is anybody else going to Rhinebeck out there? Let me know. What can I find? Oh, here it is. Let me know. We're also going to the Indie Untangled event. And when I say we, I'm talking about my cousin Dana, my friends Tara and Rachel. Uh, we went last year as well, and we really enjoyed it. So um, we've got our house all booked up and excited for that. Okay, post 15, I said, right? Um, oh, I love. Oh, I loved her shawl. Okay. The winner is CB Crafty Girl. CB Crafty Girl! Whoop whoop! Congratulations! You have won the skein of yarn, and this is what she knit the um, raindrops on Rose's shawl with Adelaide Cottage in the garden colorway. No way! I mean, that was just fate for you to win that. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So that's our in, in the garden colorway. I said I love the shawl. I didn't even know what colorway she used. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, I'm feeling generous today, so I'm going to give away uh, one more skein of that same colorway. This one will not include a, or will it? Let's see. I don't have another mauve progress keeper, do I? Where did I put them? Here they are. Let's do this 4th of July one, because it's not too far from it. So you'll get a skein of the winner number two. We'll get a skein of Cordelia, as well as the 4th of July Progress Keeper. Okay, so let's do that again. And I'm using random.org. 1 through 109, I'll show you again. Um, I also wanted to apologize to anyone who has left me a message on YouTube um, below the videos. Honestly, I didn't even know that they were there. And you, you guys are probably shaking your head at me. I cannot see them from my phone. I don't see any messages or anything. So I really want to apologize um, to anyone that left me one and I never responded or asked a question. I just noticed it when I went on to YouTube on my computer um, and I responded to some of them, but then, I mean, it's going back a couple of years now since I started podcasting. So um, definitely the best way to get in touch with me is through um, Instagram or my Etsy shop because I'm on there most frequently. Okay, so generate, let's see. So if it goes to 15 again, I will redraw 60. So post number 60 is, let's see, we had a lot of entries. It was so fun to see all the finished projects and um, celebrating this beautiful color that Kristen and I adore. Beautiful. Okay, so... Winner number two is Ditsy Mermaid. Congratulations. And she knit this beautiful um, shawl with all different shades of mauve. This is the one by Hohe. Wasn't this the mystery cow? Um, what is it? Starting? Starting point, I think this is. Absolutely beautiful. So both of you winners, congratulations. Um, contact me via Ravelry um, for this um, with your names and addresses, and I will ship these out to you as soon as possible. Um, if I don't hear from you within, we'll say, two weeks, um, I will go ahead and redraw um, just to be fair. So definitely get in touch with me and leave me your full name and address, and I'll mail these out to you. Okay, so um, we've got some quilting, and then I'll chit-chat with you. So I decided to work on a Halloween quilt because I knew I wanted to do a Christmas one this year that was going to take a really long time because I want to do a log cabin style quilt, um, and those typically take quite a while um, with a bunch of different fabrics. So 
Um, Sarah of Love Sackwell and Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick podcast decided that they were going to do, um, make a Halloween quilt. And I decided that I would like to tag along with them and make one as well. So I went ahead and bought, um, some Halloween fabrics and I forgot, I will insert, um, the name of the fabric line here, but I purchased it from Missouri Quilt Company, I believe. And... Um, so I made 30 blocks. These are 12 inch blocks. And I love this print with all of the Halloween sayings and everything on it. And then each square has this fabric around it on two of the sides. And I'm doing the quilt as you go made modern. Um, technique that I always use. So I'm just going to show these kind of quickly so that you don't have to sit here and <laughs> look at my quilt for hours. These are just little ghosts. It's hard to see in the picture. That one's kind of the same. This one is cute. I love the cakewalk because my, my um, son's school does a cakewalk every year at their fall fest. Hay rides. Halloween costume contest, haunted house. So I thought it would be fun to have a quilt for each holiday. So I'm going to try to do that for the next year. Got bats. This one. So I'm about halfway done with, with these blocks and then I just have to sew them all together and put the backing on. And then you'll be able to see what the, the pattern looks like. And then with whatever scraps I have, I think I'm going to try English paper piecing and make, make like a hexy um, tablecloth or table runner, probably a table runner. Let's get real. Um, so that's that. And for crafting, I just wanted to quickly show you my craft planner and then I'll kind of let you know what's going on with, um, with me. So this is, I showed you my other planner last time and that's my planner for like everyday stuff, things that the family has going on. Um, um, I, I started doing cleaning zones in my house. So every day I pick, I do a certain zone of, um, cleaning and it's designated to certain rooms of the house and things that need to get done. And that's been working so well. And then I decided I wanted something separate for my craft planning so that I can actually get projects done. Um, and so far, you guys, I mean, I just started this two weeks ago. In the last two weeks, I finished a pair of socks. I got all that done on my quilt. My granny square blanket is like almost finished. Um, it's really helping me. And this, like everything I showed you, I finished in the last two weeks when I started doing this. So um, this is, again, Erin Condren. This is her hardbound. You can personalize for free. So I just put craft plans. And then um, these ones don't come with tabs, the hardbound ones. So I bought her tab separately for the months. And um, this was just my first week. So I have, I like putting stickers in little knitting stickers at the top. So basically for the whole entire week, I pick one or two, you know, big projects that need to get done. And, um, certain days I work on them. So I might do like three days in a row of my granny blanket, you know, and then two or three of a cross stitch project that I want to finish. And then when it's time to plan, I plan on Sundays. I kind of look back and see what I still need to get done and then I carry it over to the following week. Um, so, so far it's working really, really well. Like I said, this is my second week in here. Um, and tomorrow I get to plan again in two different planners. So I've been collecting, I took a planning, a creative planning class online. Um, and she introduced me to the world of, um, like, um, 
Boho, Bujo, Bujo, bullet journaling. They call it like Boho or Bujo. I don't know. Bullet journaling, um, art journaling, stamping, card making. You know what happens with me. I need all the supplies when I learn a new craft. I need, I feel like I need, I don't need. Um, I like to have all the supplies so that that craft is the most enjoyable for me to do. I don't want to be annoyed because I don't have a tool or, you know, something can take half as much time if I had this. So I get, you know, a little allowance each week for craft crafting purchases. Um, sometimes I use it for yarn. I have so much yarn right now, though, that I'm literally busting at the seams on my shelves over there. I'm very lucky to have what I have. So I really want to focus on working through that, especially with Rhinebeck coming up. Um, so with my allowance the last two weeks, I've just been buying supplies for planning, um, lots of stickers. There are a lot of sticker makers out there. Um, Erin Condren has lots of stickers. And if you're interested in either of those, um, Erin Condren planners, I'll put a link below where you can, um, click on it and get 10% off. It's my referral link. You'll, or not 10%, you'll get $10 off of your first order, um, which is awesome. And she ships out of um, America as well to most other countries. So definitely check that out. She's got teacher planners, which, which are really, really cool. Um, makes me want to be a teacher just so I could use them. Um, life planners, which is what I have. And then they've got the um, a small hardbound, which is this. And then there's a large hardbound as well um, in all different colors. And they've got notebooks and stickers and markers. And it's just... You just fall down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so I've been buying, I keep looking over there because I have a new cart, like a kind of like a Raskog cart full of all of my planning and stamping supplies. And it just makes me so happy when I look at it. Um, so I've been really loving my bullet journal. Um, I forgot to bring it over here, but um, it's a Foxy Fix and you put um, little notebooks inside and I use that for like trackers. So I have like books that I would like to read this year, um, you know, weight loss tracking. Um, and I, I just got it. So I'm kind of putting post-its on each page with what I would like to put there. And I'm using lots of stamps and coloring and washi tapes and markers and all of this fun stuff. Gelatos. Um, I started Bible journaling, which is really fun. Um, I won't get into religious stuff on this podcast, but that's all I wanted to say about that. Um, and yeah, I'm just having fun. I feel like I do so many different crafts and I love that. Um, it can be overwhelming. And I think that that's why I haven't been getting as much done as I would like. It's because I hop from one thing to another because I just love it. I love doing it all so much. And I'm getting nothing finished. I'm starting a bunch of things. So this planner is really, really helping me. Um, I'm super happy. I just hope that it, it stays that way. Um, okay, so that's what I wanted to say about that. Personal stuff. Okay, so for those of you who might already know, um, I battled cancer back in 2015. Um, a very rare cancer in my spinal cord. Um, in my neck at C2, C3, I had, or I still have a, um, a malignant, it was malignant. Now it's not tumor growing inside of my spinal cord. So it grew and intertwined with all of my nerves. Um, basically your, your cervical spinal cord controls everything from there below it. So all the way down to my toes. So they determined that they wanted to go in and do a surgery to remove it. So I did that um, in, at New York, uh, in New York City at Memorial Sloan Kettering, um, and they couldn't remove it. It was just too embedded in that healthy spinal cord tissue. But he dug and dug for hours. I was in the OR for like 10 hours, um, and he couldn't get it out. So that surgery did a lot of damage to my nerves. And... Um, Prior to that surgery, they had me on very high dose, a very high dose of steroids um, to kind of decrease the inflammation in my spinal cord before they went in to do the surgery. 
So I was on a high dose for, I would say, almost a month before surgery. Um, When I was taking it, my knees were hurting, and I noticed that there were a couple of nights about, I would say, about a week after starting to take it, um, I was up all night with this knee pain. It was achy and sharp and just didn't feel right. Um, and I was like, oh, well, maybe it's, you know, the steroids. I don't know, you know, pathologically what it's doing, but, um, I told my doctor about it and, you know, he said, you know, whatever. (laughs) He didn't say whatever, but it was, I don't know, didn't really do anything about it. So continued the steroids through my surgery, through rehab. Um, when I woke up, I couldn't feel where I was in space from like my thoracic spine down to my toes. So when I stepped on the floor, I couldn't feel the floor under me. Um, I couldn't feel touch to my feet or my legs. I still pretty much can't. I probably got about 20% of my feeling back. So I always have to be barefoot um, as much as possible so that I um, can feel where I'm walking. Otherwise, I step on things that can hurt me and I don't even feel it. Um, I've fallen down the stairs a lot. I continue to fall down the stairs a lot. Um, So it's just, um, I'm very thankful though that I was, um, that I beat that cancer. So after my surgery, I went to rehab to learn how to walk again. And I had to continue those steroids. Um, They can't just take you off of them. You kind of have to taper off of them. Um, And I, Meanwhile, I got Cushing's syndrome from the high doses of steroids, so I gained a lot of weight, um, about 50 pounds in total, um, just really disturbing <laughs> symptoms, um, like men's facial hair, thick facial hair all over my face, acne, huge, disgusting pimples and that look like a terrible rash on my chest, my shoulders, my back, um, my neck up to here, um, huge abdomen, um, you know, all the symptoms of Cushing's. So the steroids were not my best friend. I was very mad at the steroids. It took about six to eight weeks to taper me off after my surgery. So then I was done with the steroids, had the facial hair waxed off, Luckily, it didn't grow back. Um, you know, the, the rash went away. Um, the weight never came off because I'm not allowed to exercise. I can't walk for long periods. Um, the only thing I can really do is swim, and I can't do laps. I can just kind of float around in there. So um, that's been a struggle. But, you know, and I still blame the steroids because that's when I gain the weight. Long story long, um, I started having knee pain again. Um, probably about six months ago. And I just attributed it to early onset arthritis. I just figured because of the weight gain um, that I had developed arthritis. And it's getting worse and worse with, you know, as time goes on. Finally, it was to the point a couple of weeks ago where it's hard for me to stand up from a sitting position. It was hard for me to get down onto the floor to change my son. Um, It was extra hard for me to get back up from the floor. And then one day, about two weeks ago, um, it was hard to walk down the stairs. So I was like, all right, I need to go to the doctor. She sent me for an x-ray. The x-ray showed something. I went for an MRI. And it ended up being um, um, steroid-induced avascular necrosis, which is also called osteonecrosis, um, and I have it in both knees. It was 100% caused from um, high-dose long-term steroid use, as well as um, the radiation that I had could have possibly contributed to it. So basically what that does, the steroids um, make your blood very fatty, um, and that in my knees, which is why I felt pain when I was actually taking the steroids in the beginning, the blood couldn't get to my knee bones for some reason. The lipids like block the 
the veins and arteries that feed my, the bones in my knee area blood and nourishment. So the bones started to die at that point, and it takes a very long time, um, you know, cell by cell. It started to die. So it's been about two years now. Um, and it says with that disease process that you don't feel pain until it's advanced, you know, at my stage. So my there is dead bone in both of my knees. So I'm going to see, um, it just keeps getting worse, and that's what scares me. I'm going to see an, um, uh, an orthopedic surgeon on Tuesday. Um, to see what we can do about it. And since it's advanced, I don't know. I'm just hoping to avoid knee replacements at my age because I'm 34. And I, I have a long time ahead of me. So I would like to avoid knee replacements if possible. Um, there are a couple things that they can do surgically. Um, they can remove the dead bone and replace it with bone from somewhere else in my body or and there's one more thing that I looked up that they might be able to do. So I'm just trying to familiar, familiarize myself with bone issues because um, I've been a labor and delivery nurse for such a long time that if you don't, if you don't use it, you lose it type of thing. I'm just not very familiar with um, bone diseases. So um, that's where we stand. Um, I have pain in my hips as well, so I'm not really sure if it made its way up there. It's actually more common to get it in the hips than the knees. Um, so they didn't, they did not MRI my hips yet because I haven't complained about the pain there yet, but um, I'm thinking maybe I should. So I just wanted to let you guys know in case there's any, um, in case there's any, you know, the shop has to go into vacation mode for a little while due to surgery or recovery or, or whatnot. Um, you guys have really been wonderful to me. Um, I've, the messages that I receive, the communication on Instagram, um, in the Ravelry group and, and all of that, I'm just very thankful for this knitting community. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, I know it's very personal, but, um, what I, what I was faced with is very rare and I kind of want to get it out there, um, for people to know about it because, um, you know, I, I just, in the beginning, I just had numbness and weakness and tingling in my right arm. And that happens so commonly with, you know, heart disease and, or heart attack and stroke and, um, things like that. And if they don't find any heart disease or stroke, you know, they might dismiss any kind of health condition and say, oh, you're just fine. But, you know, I had a tumor inside of my spinal cord. So it was, um, it's just not very common. Um, and then on the 25th of this month, I go back to New York City where I had my spinal cord surgery and have another MRI to see if the tumor grew at all. So um, I would appreciate any positive thoughts or prayers that you can send my way. Um, it means a lot to me. So um, the only other news that I have is that I'm doing a Gilmore Girls um, inspired yarn club. It's a three month subscription. Um, this first round is sold out, but it will reopen for, um, for more, uh, slots. I'm losing my words now. <laughs> I need more coffee. Um, so this one's July, August, September. So September, let's see. Look for an Instagram post or a podcast. Um, I'm going to podcast before then, of course, but I will announce it on Instagram for sure when signups will be for the um, October, October, November, December club. So um, that will be round two. And you get a skein of um, yarn in an exclusive Gilmore Girls inspired colorway. Um, I write a little snippet about, you know, which, where I got my inspiration from which season, which episode. You get a progress keeper, and um, yeah, it'll be all packaged pretty for you. Um, but that's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the episode. It was nice to nice to um, catch up with all of you. I wish you can talk back to me so that I can see what you're all doing. But So that's about it for today. I hope you're all well. Um, take care of yourselves. 
Let me know what you think about the episode um, in the Ravelry group. And don't forget to click subscribe um, down below on YouTube for my channel. And click the thumbs up button if you like the episode. Um, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.